Wow, okay. I don't even feel like I'm a YouTuber anymore at this point. Someone revoke my title. There's like a billion flies that are just inching their way towards me. Just please don't come in the car. <laughs> if you were following me last summer, there was a specific video where I just got swarmed by flies. Like I moved to like four different locations and they just followed me to every single place. I feel like where I moved is just, it's so buggy. We've had an ant infestation basically the entire time that I've lived in this cabin, even in the fucking snow. Like who has ants in the snow? I'm gonna cry. Like, move me back to the city, bitch. Move me back. I actually already ate two gummies, so probably within the next, like, 20 or 30 minutes, if I start rambling, you guys already know that's why. So, we'll see. <coughs> I felt like actually doing a sit-down video that's more serious. I don't know. I know this title is so fucking harsh and I'm sure so many of you guys are gonna be like, girl, what? Especially my viewers that come from healthy, normal functioning families. This is probably foreign, but I know that I got a lot of mentally ill bitches on here. I don't know, I attract y'all. Like I see you guys in my DMs. People ask me for advice and I'm like, I'm really not the person that you should come to, but let's have a chat. Let's have a fucking chat. <laughs> And this is kind of a topic that I was afraid to talk about because I always had family to worry about, you know what I'm saying? How are you gonna talk about the situations that you have with your family when you have family in contact with you? How do I fucking say this? I had to rebel so much to have the career that I have, this channel. My family expected me to go the normal route when I was younger. I mean, they always kind of had a suspicion because I was always different than a lot of the other kids. They thought that I might have a less traditional route, but when I actually started smoking weed on fucking YouTube, they were like, what? And they hated it so much. And so, sticking to it and choosing to go that route felt like so much rebellion. Not to mention, I pretty much have gotten in trouble my whole life. So when I finally decided, fuck it, I'm gonna put all my balls in one court and I'm gonna go for this social media thing and I'm just gonna fucking do it. And then it actually worked out. I was like, oh my God, I can take a breath, bro. Like I can fucking breathe. Like I don't wanna rebel anymore. I'm an adult now, this is my job and I fucking made it, you know? Like we're done rebelling. That was how I felt. I wanted everything to be chill. I wanted to keep the peace. I just, I didn't want to do anything or talk about anything online that would disrupt the way my family saw me. I had a really rough upbringing. It was just straight up verbally abusive. Things were not easy for me. And I recently found out that I'm autistic. I didn't know that growing up, but I just knew something wasn't quite normal, I guess you could say. I mean, I don't know what is fucking normal, but something was different than my peers. That certainly didn't help how I was treated at home because I just wasn't really understood. I mean, there were things I did and it was very obvious that they scared my mom, they scared my family. People didn't exactly know how to handle it. Nobody had the education on young girls with autism that they do now and it was mostly just diagnosed with boys. And so the way I was treated, I just felt constantly alienated. I felt like the odd one out. Nobody knew I was autistic. And so much of the time when I was struggling and I wasn't really fitting into a normal learning environment, it was just clear that things were a little bit different for me. I was treated like I was a bad kid. I was treated like I was trying to be a problem. And so I feel like everyone was constantly neurotic. I felt like everything was my fault. I felt like I was to blame for being different. And so much of this abuse just escalated. And so quite literally, you guys, by the time I was in middle school, I was considered so disruptive that people would just like set me in a corner and they would just let me write or do something that would distract me, which I guess was a healthy, positive outlet. But if I wasn't constantly shamed and disrupted for my normal behaviors, if people had just realized, oh wait, she's not trying to be defiant. She's trying to like send some kind of message, it's some kind of cry for help. Her needs aren't being met. She's not being loved appropriately because the boys in my class that were a little different, 
they were celebrated. All of their special interests were considered quirks, but I was just considered disruptive and problematic. And so when you're alienated to that extent your whole life, and it's really hard to put into words all of the behaviors that happen, but there were years in my childhood where I was having disruptive fits and I was freaking out just at home. I was having these horrible, horrible meltdowns and people weren't recognizing what that was from, what it was stemming from. There was emotional immaturity. I was witnessing fights. I was witnessing things that were traumatic for any child. And then of course, as a child, you can sense all the stress. You're picking it up, you're internalizing it. And so I'm sitting there like a little sponge, seeing all the stress and the yelling. And then on top of it, I'm a spectacle. People are getting on the phone and talking about me. When I'm having meltdowns, I'm being locked in rooms and then like people are sitting against the door so I can't escape. Nobody knew how to handle me, and my family was already so dysfunctional, so mean, and that all falls onto your lap as a child when you're a little bit different. Some of it, I believe, would have existed if I'd been different or not, and it isn't my fault whatsoever because unfortunately, I just come from a family that has such a long history of toxicity. So many of them are trauma bonded. My dad suffers really badly from mental health problems. He's never really been in the picture. It was mostly just my mom's side. My mom is one of three siblings and none of them chose to have kids. I was the only one. And as a result of that, I ended up being stuck in this weird place where I was the only child of the entire family. It was really hard to cope with that because the attention was constantly only on me. I didn't have siblings or cousins within my own family, so I had my peers at school, but it was really, really quite isolating. All of that abuse and stress and everything falling onto your lap and having no other kids to turn to, it would just be me in my room. And so you start learning to mask. By the time I was a teenager, I went from having this bubbly, outgoing personality to kind of just regressing into my shell when I was around my family. And that personality still existed for my friends and it still existed for me, but I just couldn't access it anymore around my family. I would begin to feel like a small, angry little girl when I was with them. I would want to snap. I would feel frustrated, annoyed. I would literally feel like, shut the fuck up. I didn't realize at the time why. <laughs> I knew something was very wrong. The way that they made me feel isolated and weird and problematic was in the most insidious ways when I was younger. They would say how much they loved me and how creative I was and how special and this and that but then there was always this sour feeling that i had like i just thought i'm disruptive i'm a bad kid like babe no you're not you are a little disruptive but you just you're literally being treated like shit. like that's a natural response to being treated like shit. i'm so sorry like and it's crazy how i have so much to say about this but articulating it when i'm actually sitting here is so difficult because I don't know. It's, it becomes hard when you're put on the spot. I like forget everything I was going to say. Anyway, by the time I was a teenager, it was no longer insidious or passive aggressive. I was just straight up treated like shit. Day in and day out, terrorized, called names. Ooh, birds are fighting. What? It was just an ongoing battle and there was even a couple times where it got physical and I just won't even recount those situations. But when you have a family that is enmeshed, it becomes so difficult. I ended up moving away. By the time I was in my late teens, I was so deeply depressed. I was so aware of what was happening and I would communicate, hey, I'm not being treated correctly. I was deprived of therapy because as soon as I was able to articulate that abuse was happening, I wasn't allowed to go to a therapist. Before, when I was a child, I was put in therapy because they could sit me on a couch and be like, what's wrong with you? But then I got a little older and I became aware that I wasn't always the fucking problem. And so of course I wasn't allowed to see anybody because I could have given away the cover. 
This is getting tiny. I'm smoking it so inconsistently. And I don't hate everybody in my family, but by my late teens, I was so depressed. And you guys know the story. I moved to the East Coast and I got the fuck out of my house and I moved in with my uncle and aunt. My self-esteem was so low at that time. I was so aggressive and angry and immature. This was when I was like 19. I wasn't doing any of the hobbies that I loved. I wasn't doing anything really to be productive for myself other than YouTube. I thank God I stuck with YouTube because it gave me an out and I wasn't allowed to do it. My mom said, fuck no, you live under my roof. You have to work a normal job or go to school. And I even showed her my first thousand dollar paycheck. I got sent a thousand dollars from a brand and I was getting this more and more. I was learning how to market. I was learning how to really make money and make this a career. And it didn't matter. She said, fuck no, you can't do it. You have to work a normal job. So I left. The last couple weeks were a complete blur. I just completely dissociated. And I spent a year on the East Coast and it was like my self-esteem was just like completely reborn. It was like I was a phoenix rising from the ashes, bitch. Like I went from feeling terrible about myself, thinking that I'm not smart, I'm not capable, I'm illiterate, all these things that I was told, to feeling hopeful getting my first apartment at 19. I moved to Long Beach, California, and I had all these amazing experiences, and I started to heal, and then I noticed that whenever I would see my mom, or I would see the family that was back in my hometown, other than my uncle and aunt, because they didn't live where I grew up, I just don't feel the same trauma with them, I started noticing how amazing I felt and how good about myself I felt for the first fucking time. I'm just like not hitting this and then I would hang out with them. I would suddenly feel ill. I would be in their presence and I would feel uncomfortable. Just this deep, gross feeling in my stomach, like a pit in my stomach, like I was about to go do something that I shouldn't do. So I would try to push that feeling away at first, especially with my mom. I'm not gonna sit on here and shit on my mom. I don't think my mom and I will ever be close. I haven't felt close to her since I was very little and I'm not gonna go in depth into the ways that I was treated. It's not that I wanna protect her, but at the same time, I think the boundaries that I've set with my entire family now are enough punishment. And I think her even being able to watch this video would be enough punishment. But I don't think my mom is a good person. There's several people in my family that I don't really think are great people and there's a lack of apologies and a lack of accountability. For the longest time, I tried to make it work until my mom and grandma came and stayed with me. And this was like 2021. And there was just this gross attitude. I love my grandma and it wasn't her, but they are like this and nothing will separate them. Unfortunately, that creates a very unhealthy lack of boundaries. It's hard to have a relationship with just one. But basically the situation went down and I felt very disrespected in my own apartment at that point. And I was like, I don't need to deal with this anymore. I'm not a scared little girl in my room. I'm done with this. I'm done maintaining the relationship. I'm done trying to put on a happy face and be nice when I feel like this person treats me like shit and also has never really apologized or even acknowledged the damage that they caused me as a young person. And so I've gone back and forth on that a little bit because it's just so hard to cut off a parent and really coming to terms with that, the guilt, People just won't understand it. So many people make you feel worse and they're gonna tell you, oh, but that's your parent, oh, this and that. And it's like, but that's not, that is not fucking it. If someone is to the point where they are going to cut off a parent, trust me, there's been a lot of trauma in a lot of years, probably in the making of some kind of abuse or something, emotional neglect, I don't know. It just doesn't come from nowhere. And one of the things that keeps people in these horrible toxic situations is people in their community telling them that they should stay in that relationship, stay in that dynamic. I'm not saying everybody should completely cut off contact, but it's okay to put up boundaries. And I felt like in my situation, if I gave an inch, she was gonna take a mile. It got to the point where every single time one of my family members would call me 
I would feel anxious. My heart would just drop. That's when you know that you need to put yourself first. It's sad because I actually feel great. I feel like my life is going amazing. I have all these great things going for me. And unfortunately, when I'm around them, I feel sick. I feel like I'm gonna cry. And I've gone back and forth in my head so many times like, oh, well maybe that means I need to go to therapy and work past some things. It definitely does mean that. But sometimes that doesn't mean that you need to do so and then go back into a relationship with the same people once you're healed. I think that would set me back. I think because they are so stuck in their ways and there's so many dynamics that I haven't even scratched the surface of with you guys, it would be of no use to me to re-enter that little bubble. It's sad, but I don't think they will ever change. And some of us, we just know that about our families. You can always have hope. But I think having that hope sometimes keeps you stuck. And I prefer to have a brutal acceptance of what I think is the reality because I studied these people for years. I watched their behaviors as a teenager and as a kid and I see them now. I really do wish them the best and I really do hope they heal because I think the way that they treat each other is honestly abhorrent but at this point it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I am moving on and that is so wild. So crazy to say that you're moving on from your family but I am. I hope nobody can relate, but maybe this will give some solace to anyone who can. Bye guys.